young Brendan stood up here and complained that us students, people like Tim and me, are engaged in a discourse of censorship, that we want to silence them. I mean, funny, you don't seem very silenced. For a start, you're here. For a, for a second, you still have your national newspaper columns. Apparently, I don't read them, but people tell me they're still out there. So what you're really saying is that, not that we're trying to silence you, but that we have the audacity to try and erode the platform that our racist and misogynistic society has given to two privileged white men. That is what we are guilty of doing. What you are saying is you personally have a right to that platform, which other people are not given. That you personally should maintain hegemony over that platform. What we are saying is move the hell over. Other people deserve that platform. Other people who are not white, who are, who, who are not men, and who are not of the people that you call privileged. Move over. And in order to do that, you have to create a space where those people can actually enter into that discourse. What I want to talk about oh no, thank you, is the discourse of hypocrisy. Because when they stand up here and say that they're engaged in free speech and they want free speech for everyone, they are actively denying the discourse of censorship that they are involved in. Brendan, when he refuses to recognise trans people's preferred pronouns and actively misgenders them in his national newspaper columns, is engaged in a discourse of censorship. He is saying, this is language to which I object. People calling themselves she when I think they are male is a language to which I object. I'm not going to recognise it and I'm going to say that it is wrong. That is engaging in the discourse of censorship. It's also so arrogant to engage in that discourse when you are not a stakeholder in it. It matters nothing to you whether or not a trans person chooses to identify in whatever way. But you are so arrogant as to think that you are allowed to censor them from doing that. Utterly repulsive. <laughs> No, thank you. I'm coming to you. Don't worry. Peter Hitchens, when you write that a discourse of Islam is what causes Muslim men to rape, you are engaged in a discourse of censorship. You are saying that the discourse of Islam is something that is wrong, something that should not be allowed, something that you object to. So, uh, yeah, go for it. Is it not true that to have a different opinion isn't the same as telling other people that they shouldn't have or they can't have that opinion? Absolutely not! of opinion would work. A difference of opinion would be for Peter to say, I am not a Muslim, but others can be. That is a difference of opinion. A difference of opinion is for Brendan to say that, is for Brendan to say that I am not someone who is, who is a transsexual, but other people, if they are, that is something that I respect. That is difference of opinion. And I'm going to talk to you exactly why this engages in this discourse of censorship. Fundamentally, the purpose of free speech is an instrumental good. It's not like, because if you're saying something to yourself in your room, it's meaningless. It's about creating meaning for societal change. It's what Brendan wanted to talk about when he was like, lags, mags, that's equal to what Shelley did. I mean, whatever. But the purpose then is to further democracy. It's to say, be able to challenge power and to be able to speak truth to power. It's not about being able to shut other people out. And the problem is that the platform at the moment isn't equal. It's not the case that we all have the same privileges, that we all have the same access to national newspaper columns, that we are all listened to. I mean, the fact that we're all here and so privileged and other people are not invited demonstrates that there's an act of privileging people when you give them a platform. And the problem is that when you engage in the discourse that these men do, when you say that other people are lesser, that their choices are lesser, and those are the privileged, people that are least privileged in those society, that is when they are unable to engage in our discourse. What we want to do on our side is to even the platform and to say, if you need to do that, you can't engage in racist language and you can't engage in sexist language. That's something we're OK with, because we think the voice of ethnic minorities and women is more important than the right of these men to be misogynistic and racist. That's something we incredibly stand for on our side. OK, so you're not a sexist. So lads mags aren't sexist. The problem is that these men have the ability to denigrate people within their national newspaper paper columns. They can say that trans people are lesser, that their choices are lesser, that ethnic minorities shouldn't be welcomed in our society. No, thank you. 
other people don't have the ability to denigrate them in the same way. An unemployed black trans woman does not have the ability to reply to Brendan O'Neill in a national newspaper column. Moreover, she is incredibly less likely to do so when that national newspaper column creates a discourse in a world that she is not welcome, that her choices are not welcome, and that she is not respected. Brendan complains about the fact that this are white people who are representing the rights of black people, etc. And the whiteness of Oxford and the Union is incredibly deplorable, but probably more explicable when we have a president who thinks it's acceptable to invite Marine Le Pen. Sorry, Lisa. We want to create an atmosphere on our side where we actually have all people have freedom of speech, and that has to be facilitated by a welcoming atmosphere. And the problem is that offence actively perpetuates censorship of marginalised groups. Why? Because the large mags that Brendan wants to talk about are the things that perpetuate a discourse that women's voices in the public sphere are less worthy. It's the sexist discourses that you get in large magazines which create the atmosphere in which men think it's legitimate to tell women who publish on the internet, to tell women journalists and women politicians that their voices are less meaningful, to sexualise and denigrate the appearance of women. And this is the thing that stops women from speaking out, from stops women being on the internet. This is the thing that cre creates Gamergate, where men think it is legitimate to threaten women with violence if they don't shut up. And this is the discourse to which you are actively participating. And that is the problem. It means that all of these people whose voices should be heard in a principle of freedom of speech are not heard. I'll take you now. No? No PR? Well, yes, yes, Go indeed. Yeah, uh, you, you, said, you said at the beginning that you didn't read our columns, and it's absolutely evident from what you've said this evening that you don't. <laughs> OK. So... <laughs> don't worry, I do my research. And the thing I'm referring to is when Peter Hitchin said about the rapes that had occurred in Oxford, that the, obviously the fact that these were Muslims was important because if you engage in a discourse where you think of other people as infidel and think of other people as lesser, that makes you more likely to be a rapist. That's why Muslims are more likely to be rapists. Exactly what you said. Where? When? Uh, 2013. Look it up. You wrote it! <laughs> Google I it! I didn't. Right. I didn't. Okay. The, wrong the problem person. is that this is... I, I mean, obviously, I did my research before the break. That's just moronic to say that I didn't. Check it yourself. You should remember what you write, especially when it's that offensive. You should okay. get a new search engine. The reason is that this also leads to harm, right? The reason why this discourse is so instrumental in perpetuating violence is obvious. Because apartheid doesn't make any sense if people aren't engaged in a discourse of racism. It will collapse under its own ridiculousness. It has to be buttressed by that discourse. Homophobic attacks make no sense without a discourse that legitimises homophobia, without playing into that discourse and being part of that conversation. Transphobic attacks make no, and all of, the tra all of the trans women and trans men who die in this country and other countries makes no sense without the discourse that Brendan O'Neill specifically perpetuates when he refuses to recognise their chosen gender identity. Islamophobic attacks in the UK make absolutely no sense without a discourse of Islamophobia, without the discourse that Peter Hitchens himself perpetuates. What we want is freedom of speech, and we want freedom of speech for everyone. And unfortunately, that means we're going to have to get these guys to shut up for a while and give the platform to someone else. <laughs>